art making can change our social experience or it can change the way we think about things. I mean, that's why we go to art, right? Like art tells us about our humanity, right? Yeah. Why we watch movies is why we listen to music is why we put art on the walls. Our individualism, yes, but also what unites us. Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. I have my good friend here. How's it going, man? Happy to be back. No, it shouldn't be about anything. Like this is yeah. one life. Yep. One life? Like fucking yeah. do it. My guy. She just got it. She totally understood it. 20 years old when I started just watching a lot of movies. How it, and it tells a story. I want to tell a story. Today I have a good friend, talented Toronto actress, Alexandra Palma. What's going on? How are you? Ooh, good friend. I was going to say new friend, but I like good friend too. Yeah, good friend. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know what I mean? We, uh, I, I say that only because I feel like I know you because uh, we've been following each other on Instagram. So we have like a window to our, each other's lives. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely a new friend. Good friend. That's how I, I like to make everyone feel inclusive. It's a safe space. Italian friend. <laughs> Italian friend. Paisan, I should say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yes, welcome to the podcast. It's a, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, of course. Um, so like I was mentioning, Alexandra, you and I have been following each other uh, over Instagram. Uh, we've seen each other's work. Um, and it's also uh, nice to see, like, um, you know, we're connecting with local creatives in Toronto, especially knowing they have a, they share a mutual network with individuals I've had the pleasure of collaborating with, like Abio Michael and Malika Hani Hamadi. Have you worked with them closely or do you just know them through Instagram? Actually, it's funny. Um, I met Abil because we did Handmaid's Tale together in the oh, summer. Nice. Yeah, oh, awesome. and we were on set and he was wearing um, like a Marvel shirt. And I had like, I went like deep into like the Marvel hole, like, during one of the lockdowns and i was like oh cool like who's your favorite avenger right. blah 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 so that's how we started talking right. and um and he was like oh are you an actress and i was doing background work at handmaid's tale so it made sense like why he would ask if i was an actress of course because i learned that like a lot of people go into background with uh different goals in mind like some people go in just to um chill and have like a cool way of making some extra money on the side yeah. and then you have people like me who are like going into background on a big show like handmaid's tale because i want to see what this set is like i want to see what the actors are like i friggin love elizabeth moss i love handmaid's tale and like mad men was one of my comfort shows during the pandemic oh yes same here i binge watched the whole thing oh my god yeah i watched it twice yeah awesome i love so that show. good yeah. I know, right? Like I tell people like, oh, Mad Men is my comfort show. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, no, but that's okay. That's fine. Oh, why? Because they can't get into them, get into it themselves or like what's Because it's dark, right? Oh, like, it's, it's dark. Really yeah, deep, yeah. Right. You know, but uh, it's so like aesthetically succinct. Anyways, I digress. I met Abil sure. because <laughs> <laughs> we were on the vibes were vibing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah he was yeah, wearing a Marvel shirt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was cool. So then we got into contact that way. Um, and I actually met Malika online as well. So um, it, <laughs> so crazy. Uh, we are actually doing our master. We were doing our master's degree at the same time. Same school, same program. Can oh, you wow. believe that? For what? That crazy? Uh, for what program? Like what were you guys studying? Uh, so it's at U of T at OISE, and it's uh, in a program that's very much based in like sociology and social justice. It's called right, adult right. education and community development. Yeah. So at the time when I met Malika, I think it was I was creating um, a couple different profiles online uh, to expand my reach as an actor, basically. Right. So I made like a new Instagram account that was like public and like I put my headshots on it and I made these like fun like little like skits and videos and whatever. And um, I, I had like a whole process. I had like a, like a spreadsheet that I was following of like hashtags to follow. And I kind of like set up an account to like meet more Toronto creatives because this was like spring 2022 at the time. Yeah. I hadn't left my house in like, you know, forever, obviously, as, yes. as many of us were. Um, us right. So it was kind of like, and like last spring, that's kind of when I, I made this like, um, actor Instagram page and like I made a website and blah 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 and I added her and she was like oh hey like you look really familiar I think we had this class together and then it was like boom instant friendship <laughs> that's awesome yeah no yeah. That's, that's great to hear and uh you described them uh perfectly uh that's how my experience has been with Abil and Malika you know very talented people but also very personable um and you know they're always uh looking to have a conversation very easy going and um, yeah, I had the pleasure of working with them. Uh, I still work with uh, Abil. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a close collaborator of mine. I don't know if you've seen Lady of the Night. 
um, of the Toronto I haven't seen it film. yet. Oh, <gasps> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be sure to send you a DM. But that was in the Toronto Shorts International Film Festival. So we were really uh, thrilled by that opportunity. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's uh, we've been we've known each other, I think, since 2018 uh nice. through rain dance toronto uh, i'm not sure are you familiar with rain dance mm -mm. uh it's another like film institution that uh kind of helps cultivate um you know aspiring filmmakers mm. by teaching them you know uh the ropes <laughs> if you will right through courses yeah. yeah and uh yeah basically um we've been collaborating ever since and malika and i had the opportunity of collaborating on um a director and a performance for cracked did you watch that film I haven't watched her yet. All right. Bye so guess. bye guys. Canceled. <laughs> yeah, I know. Canceled. I'm canceled. I'm just using yeah, it yeah. as a plug for my films. If any, if as you should. Know. Yeah, right. <laughs> as you should. You're making Lady me... Gaga, listen, I have to say this. Lady yeah. Gaga is my favorite person in the world. Okay. I love her. If okay. you need to know anything about me, Lady Gaga is my favorite. So she's like and your Tarantino. Every I have a picture. <laughs> I met her in 2013. I have a picture no. of me and her on my wall. Yeah. Nice. I waited for her outside the Hazleton Hotel in, in Yorkville you. in 2013. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so anyways, you know, she's the queen of all crazy Italians. I love of her. Of course, of course. And she is very much, she always says, like, if someone compliments you on your work, instead of being like, oh, no, no, da, 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 you say, thank you very much. I worked very hard on it. And I appreciate what you said. And like, I feel like we often like undermine like the work that we do. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I just did this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we blah. undersell like, no. ourselves. Yeah. No, don't do not undersell yourself. Like oversell yeah. yourself for God's sake. So well, yeah, just, plug yeah, your just, movies. Plug thank your films. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll be I'll be sure to send you those links because I am always curious about um my peers, like their their feedback. Um but honestly like yeah speaking back to like underselling yourself that's a conversation i've been having again we're uh italians right coming from that background i'm sure you know you have to be modest <laughs> right don't Did they you just know how to exhale into the mic right Number one role, you I never know. exhale in the mic you no know, because you know what it is it's like i Questo si chiama la bella figura. yeah i literally was having this conversation mm. with my family um because it's just frowned upon you know what i mean mm. you can't just go around saying i'm good at this and i'm good at that and mm. while you should have you know not go past the point of being pretentious mm. at the same time you should you have only you're going to understand how much hard work you put into something or only you're mm. going to understand your worth right when you're applying to a job when you're submitting an application like mm. no one else is going to tell you for you right and mm. i don't like the idea of playing always you know too safe it's like you gotta mm. sometimes take the risk and say no i demand this okay you're not worth that let's negotiate but i'm not going to undersell myself no i i'm, I'm aware of my talent mm -hmm. and that's the thing, right? It's, it's, uh, you got to be humble about it for sure. Mm. I have room to improve, but mm -hmm. I look around and it's like, I also am pretty aware of how much I've improved as an individual mm. since, uh, you know, entering this, this industry. So the same, I'm sure you could say for yourself, right? As, oh my God. Yeah. As we, yeah, as we, as we identify like the talents that we have, we have to, uh, celebrate them, uh, mm -hmm. because no one else will do it for us. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, so, for sure. For sure. Like you keep yourself grounded by understanding that you like you must improve. There is always yes. room to improve. But something that I'm learning and something is that I'm continuously working at is trying to be like less hard on myself and just like friggin chill. You know what I mean? Like I did a good job, pat myself on the back, like recognize I did a good job and like keep going. Exactly. Yeah. That's a healthy attitude yeah. for sure. And that's something yeah. that, again, I openly endorse. Um, mm -hmm. and something so, that I've noticed oh sorry yeah, go ahead sure. no no go ahead go ahead I was gonna say that like um something that I've noticed big time like so I was saying before like I I, I uh, did my master's degree right, right like I did it right. online yes and yes. it was crazy because I actually started my master's degree in um September of 2020 so it was like in the middle of lockdown like whatever um and I finished it in July of 2022 so like the whole thing was online like the only thing that was in person was um like my graduation which was whack but um since 22 has since 2022 has begun I've been in acting classes consistently right and like you were saying you said rain dance collective is something that you were part rain of Dance Toronto yeah it's a film institution yeah like me and Abiel uh that's how we met cool and that's like a school yeah, it's somewhat, yeah, um, they, they operate out of like Daniel's spectrum, like they've, it's like pop ups, right? Uh, but okay, yeah, essentially, sweet. it's a school. It's like an online slash in person um, school. Cool. Okay, cool. So good. So then you'll get what I'm saying here. Like yes. since since 2022 started, I've been in acting classes consistently. And I, I actually like I found my acting studio and I found my acting coaches in the end of 2019. 
And like, that's also when I like signed to my, my agent and whatever. And I thought I was on a roll. And then obviously like 2020 happened and I had to put a pause on anything. But again, fast forward to 2022, I've been in classes consistently all year. And like, I feel a huge difference. Like I feel a huge difference. It feels really reassuring to, to hear my coaches say like, we noticed a difference in your work. Um, yeah. And like, uh, something else that they always say is that, um, like innovation happens with groups of people, like innovation happens with like community support. So, uh, I, I just, I like, I can't imagine how, uh, you can make progress or measure progress without having like, like a school to fall back on or an acting coach to fall back on. Or like, I've made so many good friends in my acting studio, raw actor studio. Sophie Ann Rooney is my acting coach. Nice. And, um, yeah, like, I don't know. You just, no, I do know you need that network. You need that network yeah. to thrive. Well, you can't do it by yourself. That's what I got to say. Right. Like yeah. back to your point. Um, yeah. I quickly understood that when I first started, I had to do everything myself at a necessity because mm-hmm. no one was looking at me. I didn't go to film school. I didn't have uh, the network, uh, that was related to the industry. Mm-hmm. So uh, out of university, right. I was just like on my own rogue, if you will, <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Just w- with a, with a camera and a tripod and graffiti alley back in 2016 work um, we love it you said you went to right well you yeah Ryerson, I, heard yeah, I went to Ryerson, Ryerson. TMU now Toronto yeah. Metropolitan yeah mm-hmm. for uh, marketing mm-hmm. um, which I still integrate right into uh, mm-hmm. you know the profession uh, and mm-hmm. 94 Productions Incorporated but mm-hmm. at the same time it's like it wasn't like I went to a film school I went, was going to film classes mm-hmm. I wanted to be a writer director but what kind of writer director is saying mm-hmm. that if they have nothing to their name right there's like no short films like I had nothing zip mm-hmm. I had I should say and I still do like uh, feature length screenplays that I've been writing since I was 18. Uh, nice. But that wasn't enough. Like for me, I wanted to be a director, right? And you mm-hmm. can't be a director if you haven't directed anything before anyone. Right. So I needed to really like uh, hone down and figure out uh, what what was I was going to make of myself um, mm-hmm. in the next uh, subsequent years. But yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. You have to do it with your, with uh, people. It's the mm-hmm. only way to get it done um, efficiently mm-hmm. <laughs> and smart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's how I met people like yourself, right? Just mm-hmm. through Instagram, through this podcast. This has been a great outlet. I always endorse this podcast. And mm-hmm. if you're curious about having a creative outlet like this, I definitely would advocate it because um, the amount of people that you would come across, the amount of people mm-hmm. that you would connect with, I definitely uh, would encourage it. So having said that, you know, we connected over Instagram, you know, mm-hmm. and like I said, I was looking over your profile and you really truly embody the acting uh, persona, right? Like the, oh, thanks. you are, you are like, no, but you really embrace. It. And this is what I mean by like not being modest about it. You want mm-hmm. people to know like you're theatrical, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love. You know, it's, it's like you're an artist through and through and you're not ashamed of it, right? Unapologetic. Thank um, you. And you do it in a tasteful way too, right? Like you, you're aware of your talents. So that's what I, that's what I should add as well, right? Like you're a self-aware you. individual. So seeing all that, mm. I want to know why did you be, why did, uh, seeing all that, I want to know why did you decide to become an actress? Well, well, I always wanted to be an actor. Like that, <laughs> duh. Like that's yeah. like the basic answer. Everybody knows that. But I think like you need to, I feel like you can always have like, Uh, an idea or a passion in mind. But for me, it wasn't until like I really stepped away from it for a couple years that I realized, can I swear? Yeah, I could do it. You you can do whatever you want. (laughs) We are now an explicit podcast episode. Swearing light. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. I'll I'll keep it on a minimum. Um, But like... uh, Whatever comes natural. I know. I think what really came to me was like when I took a couple years like away from acting and I stepped away from it, Right. uh, that was like, no, I need to be acting like for real, for real. So I actually started my undergrad at U of T in like uh, an exclusively like academic uh, uh, subject. So I actually went to, a, okay, we're going back, like back, back, back again. I went to a performing arts high school in Toronto and it was, and I was in the drama program there and I loved it. Like I'm one of those annoying people who really loved high school straight up. And I think a lot of it was because I was surrounded by art every day. I had an opportunity to create within the curriculum every day. I had an opportunity to create extracurricularly. Um, There was always room for expression. And I met a lot of like my people out of there. Like I made really good friends. I met my partner there, everything. Um, But then when I went to undergrad, I don't know, you start to hear like, you start to hear those voices where it's like, oh, you want to be an actor? Yeah. Oh, you're going to be a filmmaker? Oh, you know, it's it's really hard life. 
you know so you, you felt can't... there was a negative connotation every time absolutely was... yeah. and i and i also feel like I chose a non-academic subject matter to focus in. It was like I started off in human biology and so science was super hard. And I also felt like, you know, my family, again, like as we were saying, my family's Italian as well. Like my mom came to Canada with her parents and her siblings when she was like a little girl many, many, many years ago. Right. And there's there is that, um, you know, that like scarcity mindset that can that can overcome. And, uh, you know, your your family just wants you to be like safe and secure. So obviously they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, like, you know, acting's not safe and secure. Like do this, do that, like do something that's more secure. And I feel like and I know that came from a place of love, but I feel like my like little 18 year old brain I kind of like I let that take over too much and I didn't do any acting for several years and it 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 sucked it was bullshit like I had nothing to look forward to like the connections that I was making with people they weren't genuine because there wasn't anything that I was like genuinely it was contrived connecting with. yeah contrived I need to look that up no it was forced it was a forced <laughs> experience no what I mean is that it wasn't organic like you didn't feel like it was coming through yeah like I was like oh organic yeah yeah and i can i relate to that again that's why i i love that yeah, you said you were italian uh before the podcast we were, we were discussing obviously your na- last name gave it away <laughs> because you're two letters away right <laughs> from De Palma. but um honestly just going back to like my experience you know entering mm-hmm. the film business right or just suggesting to my family i wanted to be a director immediately mm-hmm negativity to this Mm -hmm. day sometimes like i get pushback even though they've seen like you know obviously they're much more supportive than when i was 18 yeah but it's just amazing to me again it's just that mentality it's like Mm -hmm. how do you know and i'm like you don't you just go for it you gotta (laughs) believe in yourself you know what i mean you never know and all these people i always tell people like lady gaga for instance keep in mind i don't know her full name you know her full name her real name stephanie joanne angelina germanata there you go that one time that was just a name you know what I mean? Like that was just someone that someone knew. It wasn't mm. anything special. And it wasn't Lady mm. Gaga, that's for sure. So what I mean is that everybody you revere, everybody you aspire to become was just a no was the same as you, a nobody until mm. they had the conviction to pursue, you know, what they desired in their heart. Now, does it always ha- happen for everyone else? No. Like there's always that 1%. But the way I look at it is if you don't take the shot, how do you even know it's going to happen? exactly and then how shitty are you gonna feel after if you just don't take any if you don't take a shot like you you feel like crap you know what i mean like at least you can say like hey i gave it a good run like i gave it my all you know um so i I totally agree and like um it wasn't until like later on in my undergrad where i was like okay i started doing some like campus theater shows they were all like musical theater like on stage and that was where i got a lot of my uh, initial like experience in the arts from because I grew up dancing like ballet jazz tap like musical theater all that that was so your then, initial experience into the art yeah the arts right yeah yeah exactly it was it was ballet um and then they were like oh like you yeah, know she's okay at ballet but like oh she's funny like let's put her in musical theater I'm like okay like I'll take it like sure thanks so yeah so then um by the time I like wrapped up my undergrad I I did a couple like campus theater shows. I got some good friends at the end of that. And then by the time that happened, it was 2018. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm just going to go for it. Like my undergrad's done, whatever. I'm going to start look for acting coaches in the city. So I went around a couple places, finally found my acting coach, um, paid for my my headshots by myself, paid for my acting classes by myself, got my agent by myself. I never, ever asked for money for anything acting related like ever oh, like, from this family is some... you're saying yeah from from family okay. yeah nice. um and that's you know i mean maybe that sounds given but like i it's something that i've always like no like this is mine like i'm not gonna get good headshots done until i can afford it myself like blah 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 blah. anyways i digress so um a lot of that time on my own i was like okay like this is my time like let's go let's do it right. and then boom, 2020 happened Yes. When happened. I was going to say 2020, you're, I, I feel like you're about to approach a new subject was the catalyst for you. It, becoming, it really right? was. Yeah. It actress. really was. Yeah. Because yeah. this is the thing, like I sought out my master's degree in 2019 and uh, I want, I sought it out because at the time I was doing retail, um, there's only so much money I could make. I wanted to uh, upgrade. Um, I also enjoy academia, like straight up. I enjoy research, qualitative right. research. I enjoy right. interviews. I enjoy writing papers. Like I love that shit. Of course. So 
yeah and but then when i was in my my master's degree i was like okay like i'm gonna take these classes like see what's up and i discovered this field of research called applied theater and i had no idea that it existed to the to the magnitude in which it did at u of t mm -hmm. and how well funded it was wow. so basically applied theater what it does is that it goes into any community that is looking to uh to have their story heard that are looking to have um their needs met and okay. it gives them an opportunity to talk about their experiences hmm. so a lot of this applied theater research has been done within uh, homeless youth or youth that lives in shelters or um uh, let's say uh youth in schools in countries that are facing economic austerity um or um uh, one that's local to toronto is uh, lgbtq families and students in schools and what their experience is like right. so basically the way applied theater works is that you go in with the community mm -hmm. you do this interview they talk about what they want to talk about then you have a playwright who i'm like giving you the condensed version this is yeah. like the oh, condensed okay, great. it's this even is, more elaborate wow <laughs> ooh, it's, this is the condensed bold version i got, um, I got it you, yeah you write a play you write a play script Okay. And then um, what you can do is that you show you like you put the play on, right? Like you pick a theater, Crow's Theater, this, that, whatever, wherever the funding is available. And uh, then you can interview the audiences later, see how their perceptions of things have changed, see how they. Oh, it's like you an know, experiment. How, exactly. Like how like how has their perception of homeless youth in Toronto changed? Do they think that this area needs to be more well supported? Like is it the way that they look at um students who live in uh economically challenged neighborhoods like is their perspective going to change and with that like what kind of social change can we make with our art making and this is me like re like literally in this room like my master's degree reading about this i'm like oh shit like this exists this yeah. exists like i didn't know this existed and it's well funded too so throughout right so cool like so cool so and you this were happens so what this you're saying this program is was a segue to acting like you or you found a way to kind of like uh, integrate it. I found a way to bring my passion for acting back into academia in my master's got degree. Got it. Got it. Because that's the and challenge. It, that's the most challenging part for creators, which I wanted to interject is yeah, finding interject. the balance. Right. No, but like finding the yes. balance. Like for me, it's like, how do you my biggest thing is how mm. do you make a living while pursuing your passion? Right. Mm. Because um, as much as I have mm. my full-time job, there are times when it conflicts and gets in the way of me pursuing what I really want to do, right? right? But at the end of the day, that's where the notion comes from a starving artist. If you quit your job, you're going to always be looking for scraps to, to pe feed that passion, feed that dream. So that's what I'm saying is like, that's a common dilemma a lot of artists experience. Mm -hmm. And you're saying is that you found that avenue to bridge the two like Mary yeah and, absolutely and it, and it was completely yourself. yeah and it was completely unplanned like I came across this one course and I was like oh theater and master's degree okay let's take the course and it was like boom it shaped the, the entire rest of the master's degree but by the time that I wrapped up by the time that I like not even by the time that I finished like uh we all feel erratic like it makes you feel less alone you know of course yeah so while I was doing this, I'm like, okay, I love this. I love this so much. Yay, this is awesome. <laughs> but I want to be the one telling the stories. I don't mm. want to just study this. I want to be acting. Right. I want to do you it. You want to portray those roles. Yeah. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to be the storyteller. I can be the storyteller. Like I. So you know, a lot of people who take this specific degree, maybe. Perhaps they're already working professionals who are looking to upgrade themselves, whether right. they're teachers already or policymakers or program uh, analysts within, you know, any level of government, whether that's municipal, provincial or federal. But for me, I, w I had the opportunity to study within the pandemic and I, I used it to like, expand my mind and like, expand the way I thought about uh, the way people interact and how we look at our humanity. So then by the time I finished my degree, I was like, I know the power, what, what, okay, I don't mean the power of art, like whatever, <laughs> like, I don't mean to sound like corny, but, but it's true. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, the influence it has for sure. It is. And I wanted to, I don't want, I want a story tell, like, maybe there's mm -hmm. a story that's, you know, I connect to Lady Gaga for so many different reasons. She's fierce. She's powerful. She's sexy. She's, uh, she shows. She's rage. Italian. She's Italian. <laughs> 
God's sakes. I know. <laughs> Look, I'm not even doing that. Look, I'm not even right? doing this. Put it down. Like, but, uh, God damn it. But you got to have so, some pride, right? Some, uh, yeah, some pride. Of course. Culture, yeah. Of course. I'd pride in your culture. Absolutely. So, um, that's great. Well, yeah. we keep discussing like with regards to acting yeah. or being an actress, right? Like how it allowed you to tap into that creative potential and tell those stories. Mm -hmm. I want to know from you, are you just see yourself as an actress or because for me, the way I look at it is I want to mm -hmm. take control of the whole story. Like I want to be the visionary, the writer, director. Do you see yourself extending to that or that's you're, cool you're fine with uh, acting? Well, I like to hear I like to hear people talk about that because something else like you hear quite often when you're an actor is like, if you're not getting the roles that you want, write your own shit. You know what I mean? Well, especially nowadays. Yeah. Back then it was just go for auditions as much as you can. You have to live mm -hmm. in L.A. Nowadays, you got to make your own kind of brand and make it sell. Mm -hmm. um, do you I want to ask you about that? Yeah. Like, how, how have you been finding that? Because it would lead into my next question about social mm -hmm. media. And I've seen you've already been actively uh, pursuing something similar where you need mm -hmm. to cultivate your own brand. Is that, is that where it stems from? Um, I don't know. I get, I don't know if that's where it stems from. Like I would like to learn how to write stories. I, I'm actively, uh, learning how to be better at storytelling, which is like where my acting classes and where my acting coaches come in to help right. me build that foundation. Mm -hmm. I would love to like take control of the narrative and write my own stuff. But I feel like I would need to like take a class or like learn how to like write my own stuff at first. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, but what is what I have kind of been doing is that like the projects that I did get to film in 2022 okay. um, were all. So, for example, in August, I got to film like this scene for my demo reel and it was like a bespoke demo reel. Right. So you know, usually actors, like they take whatever things that they've been uh, cast in, whether that's like commercials or short films or whatever, and then they glue those clips together, they make their demo reel, right? So people could mm. see what you're capable of doing. But last summer, even last spring, like I have, I had basically no on film experience. Oh, and that's something else I want to say, like, yeah. I love applied theater research. I can see myself as a research, you know, if I can get hired as a research assistant somewhere, I've been trying. It's it's, it's rough out here. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I scour LinkedIn all the time. Anyways, I digress. So you're saying what you studied in school, you, you're having a hard time finding placement in the workplace. Right now I am. Yeah. I'll get back. Okay. We'll put a pin no, on that. We'll get back. Yeah. yeah well, I'm going to pin that and we'll get back to that. After yeah. Yeah. Day. For sure. For sure. I'm act like my, my priority is film acting and yes. film and television. That's my priority. First I, and foremost. Uh, yeah. yeah, I and I enjoy theater, but I am not chasing theater acting right now. I am chasing film and I'm chasing television. And uh, last last year, I did not have any material for a demo reel. So, like, how am I supposed <laughs> to get casted if people can't see what I can do? You know what I mean? Yes, yes. How I tell a story, what I sound like. Like, yeah, I got headshots, but you need more. You need like what I sound like, like like what I do. Anyways, so um. I got to film this like bespoke demo reel scene with raw actors. So my, my coaches right? and um, like, it was so dope because they're like, you can write your own thing or you can pick like existing source material. And of course I picked a scene from uh, American horror story, like Gaga season. <laughs> okay. And it was like these like two vampires, like interacting after like being apart for like a hundred years, whatever. But it was, it was my kind of way of like, like manifesting a dream role. You know what I mean? Yes, like something course. like, like fantasy related, but something like still sophisticated and uh, like romantic in a way, but still really like dark and obscure. So uh, even though I haven't like written my own stuff, I've noticed that since making that demo reel and since having that idea in my or that scene, having that idea in mind, I got casted for a lot of similar roles in the fall when I was doing more like student films and indie shorts. Mm. Like I did one where I was like a uh, succubus kind of character and I was like right. covered in blood and this, that, and it was part of like this horror um, festival thing that we entered online. It was awesome. Okay, and then another, yeah. right. And like, this and is like then, a horror you're saying genre, like uh, yeah. suspense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Um, a couple friends put it together and I, and I, uh, like I, I submitted myself for it. My friend was like, yeah, like you're in like, boom. So that was awesome. And then, um, in, uh, and, and then in the fall, I did a, a short with Humber 
and I had never done a student film before. Okay. Now, how did that come into? How did that come across? It popped up on casting workbook, or and then I, you know, I submitted myself, and and that was cool too. It was like campy. It's gonna be like it's gonna. Oh my God, it's like super obscure. And like all these kids that I was working with, they're all like 20 somethings in Humber. And I like, they were just so cool and creative. And nice. Even though, yeah, right. And then even though I haven't like written my own work, yeah, I feel like that scene that I had, that, that demo reel scene that I made in the summer kind of ignited the rest of these roles that I had in the months following. They're all very... Suspense, uh, suspenseful there's like this element of um of uh of a fantasy or obscurity to it and um that's been so dope and yeah yeah oh, that, that's great to hear and like yeah. <laughs> no that's great to hear. i know that's what it is right it's uh that addiction like that creative itch i call it where you always want to be uh, associated with creatives and creative projects and being mm-hmm. stimulated. And that's what I meant by like the whole balance. It's not always um, from an, f- from a financial perspective. It has to do with, again, being artistic, being um, creatively, you know, inept, like allowing yourself to be in a, that opportunistic position mm-hmm. that you can always be creating and mm-hmm. developing things of that are unique. Right. So that's what it is. Like I've always struggled with that where I, in, in the past I was landing, you were speaking of retail. I was working retail, uh, tons of odd jobs, but guess what? Working just to get, you know, that income, just to satisfy, mm-hmm. you know, the whole parent saying, are you working? Yeah. What are you doing? Right. Especially being a, a recent graduate. And then I realized, Hey, like I'm not doing anything creatively. And that's why it mm-hmm. was burning me. It was like destroying me kind of like eating yeah. away at my soul. Yeah. And I think that's where it comes comes back to with you. It's like as much as you integrated and found a way to marry the two when you academia and film, mm-hmm. uh, there's still that part of you that it's mm-hmm. like, I need to be on set. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's why you yeah. ended up on Handmaid's Tale or these uh, short film projects for Humber. <sighs> right. So, so cool. yeah. Well, so I, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, and that's what it is. You got to just keep putting yourself out there and getting that mm-hmm. consistency. And there's like mm-hmm. tons of networks for that. And I'm sure you're aware of all of them. And it's just a matter of like finding not all of them, evil. but well, I'm <laughs> just saying, yeah, like it's just, I don't know. There's just every day you learn something new, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I, as a director, you're looking for funding and I'll get a call from like one of my co-producers or like a friend mm-hmm. and say, have we tried this? And I'm like, I didn't even know they offered funding mm-hmm. for a project. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's a never ending kind of business. Mm-hmm. Um, so I call it very elusive because <laughs> You're always chasing it. You know what I mean? You can never ca- catch it and say, I got it. You know what I mean? There's always something around the corner, which could be both goes, exciting and terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And that goes back to like what we were saying earlier, like you need a community to to support you and, and point you to where these opportunities of course, are. Yeah. Right. Like, because, you know, one person can't be aware of like every single funding opportunity that exists. That's why you have a team, you know, like I actually found out about Handmaid's Tale because a girl that I was in my acting classes with work for a background casting agency and she was like hey like i we're looking for more people like do you want to be on handmaid's tale and they had like maybe like f- literally 500 background performers on Holy one shit. of the episodes for wow. one of the weeks but it was so much fun it felt like summer camp it felt like summer camp we were like filming for a week they put us up in a hotel i was yeah. like girl we're here like it yeah, was awesome. it's a studio <laughs> it's a studio production right it beats it yeah. beats uh those indie uh style kind of filmmaking where they can't even support uh, a craft service table um Aww. so that's it, it amazing was definitely different it was definitely different like being on that set it was cool to see like this is industry industry you know what i mean yeah but yeah being elite on, like, the stu- profession yeah yeah and then like being on the student films i was like this is creativity this is obscurity this is a chance for the for young people to do whatever the hell they want because they're not attached to uh, industry standards as of yet. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. they both definitely came with like surprises and I just want more, more. Can I have more? I know, <laughs> right? I know. That's the hardest part. And that's what I mean more. by, by speak, whether you're an actor um, or a writer or a director, you're always looking for the next project. I know I'm in, I'm in that position. Um, we just finished wrapping up a short film called Demon. And oh, it's in post production. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, another Abiel Michael project uh, that uh, we've been involved with. Yeah, and immediately right away, we're both looking at each other like, "What's next?" And obviously, we have something in the works, but it's that period Can right until hint? the next project. Uh, can't give you a hint right now, um, just because of like what we discussed. But um, mm-hmm. it does, you know, center in the Toronto landscape and uh, having to do with like racial political issues um, in today's Maybe. age. 
yeah so it's something to something to that effect but we're really excited Good. about it and i'm excited to to share um this uh upcoming short film and my past works <laughs> with you uh, yeah so oh my god had, i'm such yeah. a bad guest i should have watched them before i got here i'm sorry <laughs> i send it in the email to you guys oh. but she, she must have skipped the links now <laughs> flop no it's great flop. it's great that um what i always describe it best um like i have a good friend where uh, i met him in montreal like a creative mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we were talking, we we're hitting it off. And then I go in there with the portfolio. Now, some might say like, that's a bit, you know, audacious. Like you just kind of like throw in a portfolio when you're talking to them. And the reason being is because um, I can say I'm a director all I want, but you're not going to have context to the creative, I'm, uh, the creative individual that I am. Right. Yeah. So context, right. Context matters. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that after this podcast, sending you the links, then you have a better idea of, okay, this is the guy I was talking to. This mm -hmm. is what he's capable of. This is what's next. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's like, mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying like, when I did my research, like uh, to conduct this interview, <laughs> mm -hmm. I looked at your profile mm -hmm. and I was like, got a better understanding of the person I was um, kind of speaking with. And you start to understand like the nuances of the creative, right. And, mm -hmm. and like, not only their background, but where they're headed. And that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, like all the things that you post on social media, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the works that you create. We've been talking a lot about the positives and how it's like, you know, been good for your soul. Mm -hmm. what is, what's the negativity? What's the feedback been like? How, mm -hmm. how, how do you handle that? Well, all of my haters. No, I'm kidding. I'm not that yeah. big yet. I don't have any haters Just make yet. a list. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any haters yet, but you know, you, you can always get insecure about stuff, right? Like there's, there's always going to be someone funnier. There's always going to be someone prettier. There's always going to be someone smarter or whatever. But, of course. um, I think what it really comes down to is if I know what it is like to not share what you're capable of and it sucks and it hurts, hmm. like what's the, what's the alternative, like numbing yourself down? Like, no, man, like you even said yourself, like after, after you finished your undergrad, like how long did it take you to like start filmmaking? Like you said you were in retail, you said it was right. Like yeah, many you, years. Yeah, no, for sure. I was like graduated when I was like, what, 21. And then I didn't pick up a camera probably until I was 25, 26, it, which, which is go. a long time. We, we don't realize like time. five years is a long time, but it's cause I just didn't have that courage within me and I didn't have that like you were saying explaining the support group um to really inspire me to get to that but then we can go into a endless conversations about that whole topic where you should do things without the support group right <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I mean I just I feel like I know what it's like to just keep myself quiet and numb myself down and try to make other people around me comfortable but at the end of the day like you're the only person that suffers when you don't share what you can share right and um yeah, I mean, I, d I definitely am like a little bit more outspoken on my private Instagram than I am on my public one. And you right. and I follow each other on my on my on my private one, my public mm -hmm. one. I need to remind myself to keep updating it because, you know, one of the re original reasons why I made that is so that, you know, if you come across my name somewhere and you search up the Alexandra Palma on Instagram, like you can see what I look like, you can see what I sound like, like whatever. But like if like if i'm like if it's like a tuesday afternoon it's a three o'clock and i'm feeling like funny i'll be like ron stop like that's gonna be on like yeah. 22 yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? I get it. yeah so you know and it's also kind of like you also need to have like a certain level of maturity and growth as well like if you don't effing like me on social media unfollow me girl like it's your phone like you know what i mean like when i have someone on social media that bothers me i'm like this is my phone you can't stress me out on my phone like unfollow like <laughs> yeah like hello like do you know what i mean yeah 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 um yeah and i just you know i rather just share instead of being numb and quiet because numb and quiet sucks and also also like yeah nah that's it that's well it. yeah you're very uh, unapologetic <laughs> about yourself that's what that's what i take away from you. you're very un unapologetic about your craft and your persona and that's what you need to be right um especially in this day and age where there's so much competition um, that's the only way you're going to succeed is to, to mm. have that conviction, right? To, to put yourself out there and uh, to see it through. So I, I really, I really admire you. that. Yeah, for Thank sure. Thank you. I have a question yeah. for you. I feel like right now, like in this digital era that we're living in, it's yeah, like, sure. I feel like there can be a difference between like a content creator and, uh, like, a like an artist. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're saying it should be distinguished or you can be both. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, like, I feel like both of those things exist, exist separately. It's like, can you be, can you like access the reach 
that you can access as an artist, as a content creator? Because I feel like when you create content, it might not necessarily be as um, like as as expressive, or it might not suit like Accessible. an algorithm right away. Yeah, so you yeah. might not so you might not get the reach you want by being your authentic self. But then being an artist, like you're being your authentic self. So do you think you can be a content creator and an artist, or do you think those things are separate? Yeah, very good question. I believe back to what you were saying, uh, how you integrated and married the two, uh, academia and film. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I did with uh, being an artist and being a content creator. Mm -hmm. And what I'll explain to you is I had the same notion. It's like, I'm a filmmaker. Why the mm -hmm. hell would I waste time on social media, always mm -hmm. posting things? What am I going to be posting about? There's only so many mm -hmm. films I can make in a year. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And cut them up into, mm -hmm. into little posts. Mm -hmm. And what I realized with this avenue with podcasts and my mm -hmm. uh, 94 collection, a clothing line, dance music videos, all these different avenues that I explore, mm -hmm. that's what it is, is I can become the content creator while expressing myself as an artist mm -hmm. uh, through what I produce. So at my heart, at my core, I'm always a storyteller, right? I loved stories. Now, mm -hmm. why do they always have to be fictional? They could be non-fictional, like this conversation we're having right now, mm -hmm. right? This is an example of a story. And mm -hmm. what I've been doing recently is I've been posting this podcast into clips and into reels for mm -hmm. TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then I was, and, and that's an avenue. I have people in the community, whether they're filmmakers themselves or moviegoers, reach out to me, whether mm. either they want to be on the podcast, they want to collaborate with me, or they just want to provide their insight on mm -hmm. whatever uh, topic of conversation I'm putting out there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to say is, I think it comes down to a point when you don't have to, you don't have to be so like narrow minded about it. You know what I mean? And mm. don't think, overthink it. Mm. Um, like I interpreted your social media page as you mm. doing both. You know what I mean? Like I thought yes. it was like, yeah, <laughs> like I swear, like you're an actress and you're also doing these like little skits and maybe you don't even realize that, but subconsciously, like that's how I kind of perceive it as you're putting yourself, you don't realize you're marketing yourself as, mm. um, you know, Alexandra, you know, mm. as the actress that could be right. Maybe mm. that's just in your character, right? You always mm. assume these roles, like, a lot of the skits are like little like scenarios you like you put up. Mm. It's almost like you're assuming another uh, character entirely. Now, I don't know you personally, right? Mm. But that's the impression I get, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're becoming a new person in these in these uh, Instagram posts and these and these videos that you put out. So I think a lot of people, um, if not everyone, is doing it directly or indirectly <laughs> in a way mm. like they're marrying the cool. two. It's cool. necessary. Yeah, I think it's necessary uh, really in this day and age. I think it's truly necessary. And I've I like been to seeing hear the that. results. So yeah. I like to hear that. And like yeah, I yeah, like I feel the same way about your profiles. Like they stuck out to me because they had like a like a common theme. And um, I don't know, maybe yeah, you're welcome. And you should hear it. And like I uh I don't know, I because at times I'm like, oh shit, like I need to go viral. Like, how do I go viral? Oh, this is the private of the <laughs> I love that. I have the same ooh, bah, bah, bah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, okay, like, I need to go viral. Only, like you know that are you the, you know those two dancing dogs on TikTok right now? Like, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I actually haven't seen that, but I'll, I'll definitely look into it. Oh, it you know what? Maybe it's just a niche. Thing, you're worth my time, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the point that I'm making is like, like, do I have to follow like a like a trend or something? Like, can I be individual but still uh, create a reach? So that's kind of like the balance that I'm looking for right now. Um, is like, how do I like get a bigger reach? How can I um, how can I enable myself to ride the wave of an algorithm and yet still be able to be myself and still be able to create and still be able to stand out in uh, in a in a metaverse of all these different creators do you know what i'm saying that makes sense no that for sure it's yeah. like how do you how do you uh you know reach your optimal reach how do you reach your optimal audience without compromising your artistry right? oh put that in a quote yeah i'm right? so glad you recorded <laughs> yeah. that yeah I love that. no but that's that's honestly what what i yeah. uh what i feel most artists including myself struggle with right it's like how mm. do we because that, that's that, for me that's what it was i don't want to like go viral for the sake of going viral as much as it would mm -hmm. maybe benefit me i don't want that 15 minutes of fame i want it to be long term right yeah. so i kind of admire those individuals that uh go for the long game right like mm -hmm. strategize um their way to success instead totally. of just make a viral video and then work from there it doesn't work like that the way i look at it all the clips all the reels all the you know the the uh, posts that i've been making that you complimented me on eventually there's going to be that one post or maybe that one project I was involved with, or, you know, I, I directed, I wrote, whatever have you, mm. that will set it off. And then what it mm -hmm. is, is that the way I look at it, you'll see it and you'll come to my page and you'll be like, holy shit, this guy does a, a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you'll have like a library, a rich library of content. Not that a you go to library. someone's page. Yeah. Cause how many times I'll give you I an love example, it. viral content, right? 
Mm. I'm telling you right now, 90% of those profiles, whenever you go to their pages, mm. right, they don't have anything else. Yeah, there's, there's nothing no to substance. follow it. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing, there's no, there's nothing there. It. Exactly. There's no foundation. Mm. So mm. what I mean is that the ones that have been doing it for a long time, it's mm. always more satisfying, rewarding for the viewer, especially mm. to see, you know, the thought process put into getting to that point. Yeah, yeah. totally. Totally. Sure. Love that. That's so cool. So before we go, Alexandra, I want to know from you, what advice would you give to those seeking to become an actress like yourself, yet contemplate with the judgment, risks, and elusive success? Find a group of friends or people who are like in the industry to help support you because you can't do it alone. Like you need to go to class, like straight up, like you need to go to an acting class. Like it is expensive, but it's so worth it because you right. don't just get a class and a teacher. Like you get a group of friends, like you find people who are going to say your name in a room full of opportunities and mm -hmm. that's dope. And that's yeah. what we want, you know, like you want people to you want people who are going to support you and when you're in an acting class and you can find a space to be safe and be creative and the way i like to describe it is like you could be pushed off a cliff in terms of acting and storytelling but it's okay because there's a nice padded bed at the edge of the cliff and you're going to be fine like Absolutely. do you know what i mean yeah so you take that risk and it's like you know i'm very very new in terms of the industry and you know i've done projects in 2022 and i want more for 2023 and i want i want you know i want to be a superhero i want to be friggin' Catwoman. i want to do that you know in the realm of fantasy and whatever but i also want to tell a story about you know an italian girl who's trying to please her family right an italian girl who's trying to please her family who's finding her own identity in the world because that's who i am right who else is going to relate to that story? So, yeah, my, my, my biggest advice would be find a community of people who support you and love you so you could take risks and be and look stupid and, and, and it'll be okay because you grow and you learn that way. I love that. I love that. It all comes back to um, your support group. And I love that you don't come on here as, you know, being egotistical and saying you got to do it yourself fuck everybody you know what I mean it's kind of like no oh this, my god yeah you need people and I I learned that quickly especially being a director yeah you can't do it on your own you know there are people yeah. that can provide different expertise and talents that you mm -hmm. don't have right like mm -hmm. I'm in a position right now as a director where I'm delegating mm -hmm. tasks now right mm -hmm. I, I used to do everything all at all mm -hmm. at the same time mm -hmm. but the problem with that is that it takes away from quality right and there's only certain yes. things that I can excel in and certain mm -hmm. things I can't and the mm -hmm. ones that I not uh, as as talented in right as as maybe advanced in in skill sets i can now delegate to someone that specializes in specifically that so that way it becomes more of a collaborative experience of more collaborative project and it'll become um, um you know the highest quality that you can deliver um so yeah. I, I really i really admire everything that you're saying yeah it's it's so true to to have that support system and it doesn't always have to be for the gain of an opportunity you know what mm -hmm. i mean like a, oh, like a connection God. yeah uh, it's just nice to know that people like ourselves, uh, peers, I call them, right? Like yeah. we're in it together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not alone. When you, when I hear yeah. you talk about, you know, it's, it's hard to find a job because I'm going to do uh, film and I want to pursue acting or, you know, I had to bridge the two, marry the mm -hmm. two, uh, academia and film. Mm -hmm. it, it tells me, wow, like you're not so different and you're not alone. There's a lot of people that come from the same background as you, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's reassuring. You know what I mean? And it's it is a hundred percent reassuring collaboration, community, curiosity, imagination, like that's dope. Like that's it. You know, that's, that's it. the one. Those are the markers. I love mm -hmm. it. Well, Alexandra Palma, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, sharing your insights, your experiences as an actress in Toronto. Um, do you have anything to say before we leave? Thank you so much. Um, you can follow me at the Alexandra Palma on Instagram, uh, at Palmsies22 on TikTok. And that's it. Read books, watch movies, be a good person. That's a, I love it. A great <laughs> message. <laughs> well, on that note, thanks again, Alexandra, for coming on the podcast. Thank you, everybody else, for listening, and we'll talk soon.